bring your shoulder blades together. That's incorrect. In Olympic lifting, no way. Your shoulders gotta be far apart like this. Now, I'm gonna show you the famous uh, difference. Okay. That's me when I was in my top shape, <laughs> when I had black hair. <laughs> so my ability to spread the lats, and this is a lot of it was from bodybuilding and all that, help my Olympic lifting because that's the basic movement. This lats got to be spread out wide. Okay, now the next one. Here's Ivanchenko. Look at his back. He's really got the lifting muscle. He got the erector muscle really great. And his lats are flexed outside. And his traps too are stretched taut. That's the starting position. That's how your back should be. Any other thing is wrong. You get your shoulder blades together and all that, or your traps contracted, forget it. You've lost a lot of the pulling power there. Okay, next. Notice, this is a high pull. That's Ivanchenko, the Russian. It was here in Columbus when he, this picture was taken, when the World's Championship was held here. Notice his lats, the muscles, the scapular is spread out. It's not pitched together. Okay, next one. That's Pisarenko, the super heavyweight that had the world's record in the snatch. Notice his whole shoulder girdle. His uh, shoulder, the, the assembly of his whole shoulder is up. That is good movement. That is the momentum being picked up. That the bar being close to the body, not being swung. Okay, next one. That Tisarenko performing in the United States, I well, was in, I forgot, Dover, Pennsylvania, when he snatched the world's record. Notice the position. The shoulders are not backward, it's forward. All shoulders should be fully in front and all lifting movement. Okay, next one. This was a picture taken in Berlin in 1952. I was at the swimming pool. And after we did our lifting and all that, they wanted me to do a little posing and all that, so I did. But I'm doing what they call the shoulder dislocate. Notice the scapular is pulled way away from the body. That's what they call muscle control. But uh, by the way, the big person with the camera down below in black is Sammy Lee, the Olympic diving champion. And they were taking pictures while I was posing there. But the whole idea is that shoulder girdle got to be way up and out. If you can't do that, you're not going to get your high finish at the pool. Okay, next. Basically, in Olympic lifting, the start position is so, is so important. Okay. Notice in the top picture, the shoulders are carried well over the bar. And when you your back arch is there, that's a permanent thing. Only the legs move, the back remains the same. You have on the bottom, this is how most tall person get in, thinking that it's important that they get their legs all bent up like that. You have absolutely no power that way. That's better. That is the best on the very end. This is how most people get in, but they have to realize there's a certain rule. That is, the shoulder must be higher than the hip. The hip must be higher than the knee. When you have acute angle like this, you have no power. It's when the angles open up, you get stronger power. Therefore, if you start this way and you start going out like this, you're supposed to gain momentum because you're getting more power and more power and more power. So, but if you're all cramped up like this, you've got a negative start. So, by that position there, if you raise your butt higher, where in the second picture is better, but the third one where you're leaning forward, you could get a better or back arch too. The more you squat down like that into the first position, you can't get a good back arch. But you get a stronger back arch in the last picture on the end. And that means usually the balance is toward the toes. You're preventing yourself from going down by gripping the platform with your feet. But always remember, your back got to be arched constantly. Okay, next. Now, 
the bar movement, this is critical in your lifting. The first one you notice, the bar going straight up. That's in relation to the feet, where it would be. Second one, it's going out. The third one, it's coming in. Which is the most efficient way of lifting? So, whenever you go see a weightlifting contest, if you're sitting out like this and you're seeing the contest this way, you don't get to see that, which way the bar is gonna go. This is why, Stella, I hate to be the center referee. <laughs> I prefer to be on the side so you can see the pattern of the bar and you can see where the person is making the mistake. You know, when the VIP section is always in front, this is okay for physique contests and all that. But Olympic lifting, no, sit on the side. You can see exactly where the pattern of the bar is and why they lost the weight, although it may be at the right height. If you're in front, all you see is the bar going up and go down. That's all you see. Think, why did she lose that? Why did he lose that? He had the height. It's because the bar was way out in front and he was way in the back. Or he pulled correctly but jumped back. You know, one thing or another. You don't see the pattern of the pull. And that beginning of the pattern is the most important, important one. Um, Teresa, could you demonstrate? Roll that to the side so they could see from the side. She's not doing any lifting now. Okay. Can you get into your normal starting position? Okay. Can you arch your back more? Good. She just added two kilos more on her lifting ability by that strong back arch. Because now, the whole weight is transferred to the buttocks and the thighs. And just start just lifting a little bit. Right, good. Okay? Good. That's critical. Most lifters take the back arch for granted. They just get into a stiff back and they think that's it. It isn't. You saw how she was able to correct it. And this is with a light weight. If it's a heavier one, more so she has to exaggerate that. Try it once more. Okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Arch. Take a deep breath and lift your chest up. Right, good. Okay. Can you notice a little difference? Yeah, it's hard. It's harder to change it. Okay, good. Thank you. The reason it's hard for her right now is because her muscles are not used to it. She's like a beginner in this movement now. <laughs> so she has to relearn that movement. And you can't do it with a very, very heavy weight. You have to gradually work it, just like a beginner. You have to gradually work into it. Thank you. But that is critical. Most lifters don't realize how important that starting position is, how much that back arch can need. And in my talk, I always say, you get that strong back arch, you got two kilos added to your lift already. You start slow, you add another two kilos to your lift. Most lifters that I saw yesterday, I'm watching it, when they start slow, the lift is so smooth that they get the full extension. When they yank at any time, whether it's at the beginning or partially up here, they destroy their pull. It's gotta be gradual and a picked up momentum. One of the best uh, technicians was Natalie. Mm -hmm. You know, she, you can never tell when she started off the pool, right? Because it's so smooth. And so she had the national record on the snatch, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish she had stronger legs so she could get on the team and jerk too, but. <laughs> <laughs> that was my job. But you know, that, <laughs> you've got to start slow and smooth. The back arc is so critical. Okay, again. If you're coaching, you look at how they begin. If the bar goes straight up, they're doing two things. One, they are employing the leg and the back at the same time. It's going like that. Okay? That makes the bar, oh, look, go back to the first step. The second one, you notice how the bar is going away from the body. That means the legs are not being employed at all. You are immediately using the back because you're in that starting position and you're doing this. There is no leg movement. That bar has to go around the knees now. And that's where the mistake comes in. Now it's going out of the path 